how's it going guys? Homes Rider here and welcome to a brand new tutorial. So with the recent banning of Craft Bucket, a Minecraft plugin support, uh, is Craft Bucket is no longer available for download, but some uh, coders have come out with a new pretty much craft bucket and it is called Spigot. So I'm gonna be showing you guys how you can set up your own Spigot server. So all the links to these pages will be down in the description, so go ahead and click those. First off, go to get-scm.com forward slash downloads and download and click whichever one of these links corresponds to your operating system. Next, go ahead and go over to hub.spigotmc.org and click on the buildtools.jar link here and go ahead and download that. You don't need to download anything on the wiki page here. Just go ahead and I'll highlight this text here. It's scroll down a little bit, it's about halfway down the page, and it's java-jar buildtools.jar. You will need that here in a couple minutes. So next, go to the dev.bucket.org, and click on the download that will be over here, and download this. You're going to be downloading the bucket GUI, which is not needed, but I think that it is very useful and very helpful for server managing. So once you have all these downloaded, make a Minecraft uh, server, and go ahead and drag your bucket GUI into server files. I have mine separated. You don't have to do this. I think it makes it a lot easier. So I'm going to put my bucket GUI in server files and then I'm going to drag buildtools.jar into update. So go into the update folder and you're going to want to right click new text document and I'll just go ahead and title it run. Double click and insert that little uh, bit of code that you copied over from the wiki page. The Java, Java excuse me, dash jar buildtools.jar now this part is very important, make sure that you follow it close. Go to File, Save As, and, and under Save As File Type, do all files. And then do .sh. Make sure you do .sh and not like .bat or anything like that. Go ahead and click Save. Connects out of this. Now you do not need to keep your text document run. And then go ahead and double click on this run. Basically what this is doing is uh, contacting the build tools and it's going to assemble the spigot jar file that we need for our server and this is also what you needed to, down to download the git for now this can take up to 10 to 15 minutes to complete so i'll just let it run and i will be back when it's completed all right guys so when you're done this is what's going to have shown up so you're going to want to go into the spigot folder then go to spigot server and then go into target and you're going to want to get this middle jar file this is spigot dash and then it'll give the uh, version number and then I might have more after like I do with the snapshot. So just go ahead and right click, copy, and I'm going to go back. I'm going to go into server files, and then right click and paste. And I'm just going to go ahead and rename this uh, spigot-1.8.7 because that's the version. So next, I'm going to want to go into bucket GUI, hit run. And just give it a minute, this will pop up. It's got to do some update checks and whatever and else not. I'm going to create that plugins folder. All right, so now once you're in here, I will go more into detail in the part two. Uh, go into more detail about the bucket goo and how to set everything up, how to do plugins and all that. But I'm going to uh, super start. And you want to go ahead and select your Java version. I'm pretty sure I have JREAX32. And then go ahead and click on this, and then just uh, open up the spigot jar file. Go ahead and hit launch server, and if it says the Java path cannot be found, just go ahead and go back to this, and go to alternate Java path, and then just go ahead and migrate to wherever you have your Java located. It looks like I do have 64-bit, I couldn't remember on this computer. But I don't have 64-bit Java installed. So it's coming here, go into your Java folder, go into whatever you have, then go into bin, and just find your Java. And now you can hit launch server, and it will load all the libraries and all the other basic files. Now this will take a little bit of time depending upon how fast your computer is. So we'll just go ahead and generate a bunch more files, like your server properties, your EULA. But in the next part two of this uh, little tutorial, I will show you guys more into detail how to set up your EULA, uh, explain what everything is, uh, how to do plugins, just all that stuff. So uh, be sure to tap that like button if you enjoyed, and be sure to click the annotation on the screen for part two whenever it comes out within a couple days of this release. 
So again, thank you guys for watching, and have a nice day, and peace out.